But let me tell you, all of those dreams that you just heard about, those are nothing compared to our main event tonight. Oh yeah. Buckle up, folks. This one's gonna be wild. Once again, I promise you, this is real. This actually happened in my head, of course. It didn't happen in real life. If it did, it would have been all over the news. But oh boy, this is nuts. This dream I like to call... <laughs> And I won't tell you what I binged here, because I want to see if you can guess it. Okay, here we go. So I was in the car with the Griswold family from Christmas Vacation, and we crashed into a tree. We were trying to get to Chicago for some type of event, so we pulled over and asked a farmer how to get there. The farmer turns out to be a man who owns a commercial airliner. He gives me and Russ, the son, the last two seats on the flight. The rest of the family decides to use his truck, and we board the plane. And on the plane is almost the entire cast of the Heathers musical finishing up Candy Store for some reason. Because I guess, when you're in a Broadway musical, the only thing you're allowed to do is get out of your seat and start singing songs from the show. So in the dream I think, huh, maybe this is some kind of theater on a plane and I walked in too late. However, once the song is done, they just stay in character, they don't go by the story, it's just them. Realizing that there's no JD or Ram on board because Obviously, you can totally cut them out of the musical. They asked us to officially join the theater group, and I chose the part of JD while Russ decides to be Ram. I sit next to Veronica and try my best to stay in character, but in the dream, I hadn't seen the full musical, so I didn't really know what I was doing. Then she starts singing Dead Girl Walking, because... I don't know, I guess she's socially awkward and doesn't know how to socialize with people? I don't know, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Eventually, the plane lands at the old theater group that I used to be a part of back in my high school days. They were doing a production of the Friends episode, the one with Monica and Chandler's wedding. Everyone in the Heathers cast agrees to see the show and sit in the audience while I go backstage and meet the actors and say hi to my old friends, as well as other people that I just happen to know in life that weren't actually part of the group in real life, but oh well, cool cameos I guess. They excitedly greet me, but tell me that the person playing Chandler is injured, so I need to play him, because of course I do. By the way, from here on, all the Heathers cast is never mentioned again, they just disappear. So, I not only have to play Chandler now, but I just am him now. So I run off from the wedding, just like I do in the episode, and I run from the actual performance to get in character, because okay... We performed to a small yet excited audience, but for some reason Chandler became Kylo Ren at some point, which I must say is a very scary twist. Probably just because it reminds me that the Star Wars sequels exist, but still, that is really terrifying. The next day, we do a drawn together play where I am Xander and Waldor is played by my theater friend Sophia, but three clones of her that are stacked up on top of each other. Yeah. That looks exactly like him, man. I don't know what you're thinking. Have you even seen the show? I mean, pff, look, it's, a, it's identical. Because that was such a big success, they decided to do more plays. One of them is based off of Bionicle The Mask of Light, where I played Makuta. For some reason, every cast member came out one by one at the end to take a bow. That's not the weird part, though. That's customary for theater. But everyone said who they played. Like, they'd go up and say, Hi, my name is Jake, and I played Tahu. Yo, what up? My name's Leon, and I played Kopaka. Hey, what's up, diggity dogs? My name is Mung Doll, and I was Gali. These weren't the actual people, they were people in real life, and I just changed their names. Because the Bionicle play was such a success, we decided to go celebrate at a random campsite. There, the whole cast, along with Billy H.L., who was the park ranger for some reason, found out that John Chris Falusi, the creator of Ren and Stimpy, was hiding in the woods, trying to mind control people into doing... something. I don't think it was ever really explained, but okay. We all wanted to get rid of him, and we settled on literally just walking him to jail on the highway. On the way there, John K was convinced that he was getting some kind of award, and how everyone there was his best friend. On the side of the road, Ren and Stimpy were there, because of course they were, and they were homeless, begging for money, saying that they'd been out of work for three days and had nowhere to live. So they ended up getting adopted by the theater group as their very own sons, I guess we all had joint custody or something, and they helped lead John K, their own creator, to prison. What happened after they were adopted? Did John K get brought to justice? Did some other random property get introduced into this mess? Did Leon get the part of Captain Hero that he wanted so badly? I don't know, I woke up right then. 
and I'll never know how this random and rambling event ended. I have no idea what to make of this. And you know what media I binged for all this? Ren and Stimpy. How does 90% of this have to- What? Oh, man. Oh, reading that again hurt my head. Zero out of ten in the story department, but dang, it was fun to go through. And it also makes for a very interesting YouTube video, I must say.